large map uh, with troopers or rangers, whatever you call them. Uh, Queen of the Night 1. Okay, let us continue. When the sun sets, the moon shines bright. When the moon fades at dawn, the sun takes its place. The day is not eternal, and the night does not last forever. The sun and moon chase after each other, and the rotation between day and night continues unbroken. Just as the young inevitably age and the strong are doomed to fall. Some are able to accept this, but there are again those who struggle. Such is the case of a certain monk, Shiva, representative of Devaloka, whose world revolves around the cycle of death and rebirth. It is said that when his third eye opens, his true rule will be unleashed, proving him worthy of representing the entirety of his world. Yet Shiva has continued to train with his third eye closed, also that he might reach sublime heights of detachment. He has severed all emotional ties with others and refuses to connect with anyone in a meaningful way. Shiva entertains a single desire only, to improve himself through doing battle with the powerful. At least, that's how he has strived to be, for he believes that that is what is required of him. Shiva has done all he can to distance himself from the unnecessary seed that was planted within him, constantly challenging himself to reach a higher state of being. <laughs> you are determined to keep that third eye shut, shut tight, eh? And I shall keep my evil eye closed as well, as befits an honorable king. With the help of the man beside him, Valora seals his evil eye and grins. You know, I was confident I could repel any army they threw at me, but... Never did I dream that it would be you, Shiva, the one they would send my way. <laughs> Whoever wrote the script for this little farce must know me very well. Wouldn't you agree, Avarga? The situation has changed, Avarga. This is where we part ways. You should take your student and leave this place far behind. Wait, did he only take the Taurus mask? Mmm, Balor. Shiva and I are equally matched, which means I cannot assure your safety if you stay with me. You have a student who needs protection, and of course you can't forget about that unfinished business of yours. You have yet to challenge Arslan of the Aoyama Guild, correct? Uh, he remembers his own personal, I guess, uh, rivalries. So please don't trouble yourself with me any longer. Ever since that loop in which I chose to be imprisoned as a condemned man. I at least have settled all my scores. Mm, but I... I knew there was only one reason why an old man like me would be summoned to the Tokyo. I wish I'd had the chance to tell them the truth, but... Well, it might not be too late. It all depends on how this fight ends. Okay. I understand. I'll go. I wish you luck, my friend. And to you as well. May you find victory, Avarga. Now then, my apologies for the delay, Shiva. This battle shall be between the two of us alone. <laughs> the clash between these two great warriors gradually tilts in favor of Shiva, the younger of the pair. <laughs> Is that all you've got, Shiva? Come on, put your back into it. Yet Balor does not retreat so much a single step, meaning every last one of Shiva's attacks with a smile. Balor uses every inch of his wily cunning, as well as his superior physique and experience, to go head to head with Shiva. You seem to be losing focus, my boy. Did all that training amount to nothing? <laughs> Enough, Balor! Get out of my way! 
I must make chase of that fiend. Well, this is a definite case of someone who actually hates us. Because, like, I, someone at one point told us there will be people who, uh, you know, will like us uh, out of nowhere and there will still be people who hate us. Although it seems like for the first eight chapters, it was mostly just people who liked us. But holy shit, she was... <laughs> she was out for blood. But Laura and Shiva trade blows in a word in a furious melee. With every clash, the heavens shatter and the earth rumbles. What gall? You speak as though you have the right over him. Didn't your mother teach you to wait for your turn? Irrelevant. I must destroy him. <laughs> when did you become so brash? I thought patience was one of your virtues. But if you're in such a hurry, why not open the third of your, your Shiva? Show me the rule that can supposedly annihilate the entire universe. No. I have sworn never again to unleash my third eye. The suppression of delusion and endeavor of abstinence. My only desire is to forge these fists into weapons that will elevate me be beyond all measure. Good. <laughs> I'll let you in on a little secret, Shiva. You're delusional. What you're aiming for doesn't exist. Even the sun and moon do not rise indefinitely. Confused? Don't worry. These fists will make everything clear. Have at me, Shiva. At that moment, just as they are about to clash, as though targeting the very instant these two combatants are uh, braced for impact. Keep it now! Uh, uh, uh. A single arrow of light zips through the air and pierces Shiva, yet the wound is not a physical one, instead it appears to penetrate his very soul. This arrow, it's just like... No, I can't control... Ah! Shiva lets out a groan and holds his head in his hands like he's trying to suppress a surge of emotions. Then he dashes off in the opposite direction to the one who, uh, you took, looking almost furtive, as if absconding was some great secret. Well, what do you know? This would be uh, the clash with invaders too, I guess. Oh, well, yeah, Shin is, uh, Shin is not an invader. He just happens to be related to them for some reason. Hmm. Was that? Momentarily shaken by the appearance of reinforcements who could not possibly have been there, Ballora lets his guard down for an instant, but it's enough. <coughs> a darkness envelops Ballora, binding him. A darkness so deep that no light can penetrate it. Hmm. I was hoping he and Chiba would take each other out. Two birds, one stone. You know how it goes. But as they say, good and quickly seldom meet. You'll have to do for now, old King Tiernanog. What a vulture you are! Daikaku! Long time no see, Balor. So long that I cannot remember when was it that Tuskali Poke brought us face to face. As he says this, Daikaku's subordinates around the immobile Balor. Well, I've never bothered to dwell on the face of fools who cower beyond your lackeys, so I can't say I missed that memory. Is that why uh, you have to position Daikaku behind his uh, allies? I pity you, old man. Such a shame you've never you've yet to know the delight of being a mastermind, pulling strings from behind the scenes. A mastermind. More like a master chicken who's afraid of dirty his own hands. You have some nerve showing yourself before me. Now that the Scully Puck is dead and gone, I have no reason to associate myself with you. We've never seen eye to eye, and, and nor will we if we continue to be a spineless coward who operates in the shadows. In fact, I was planning on pummeling your head the next time we met, but it seems the team was upturned. <laughs> <laughs> you hate me that badly? That's a real shame, because I think so highly of you. 
I have a lot of respect for the wares that can fetch me a great price. Ah, yes. I should thank him for bringing me such good fortune. <laughs> thank? Who? Who are you talking about? Of course. No, now I see. You must be working with that warmonger's guild master. Hmm. It all makes sense now, the time of your arrival. That's it. I think I'm starting to comprehend the kind of person you are, Daikaku. <laughs> I feel a particular malaise around you, like a ache in my evil eye. Now I understand why. The shadow I feel entangling me. That is no different to you. That's enough out of you, Malor. I pity those who repeat their mistakes. This is not the first time you haughty rent caused your downfall. Now, there will be no more idle chit-chat. It is time for you to drown beneath the shadows. Oh, man. These rogue representatives are falling down like flies. Hmm. <laughs> Digging his heel into Ballora's back and clearly enjoying himself, Daikaku gr grins maniacally as Dark the Saw is the subdued king. Oh, Ballora, Ballora. I can't have you thinking that you've seen hell simply because you've condemned yourself to death. But you're in luck. I'll personally teach you what it feels like to have your dignity crushed underfoot. For I have seen what lies beneath the depths of hell. I know what it is to curse the worlds of the living and the dead alike. This world shall have need neither of sun nor moon. We have whore the light, and will keep its brilliance far from sight. All for the sake of the Oni, the Oni, great Mahakala. Hmm. Looks like another one has been brought over to this side. Alone in the, in the darkness, Tsukuyomi of the Outlaws is lost in his thoughts. Daikaku, I see. So that's what he's going by now. And he's working on building a nation in this Tokyo too, I, I expect. His method, and involving them in shadow, giving them life, and engulfing their very soul. Of course. Ah, how very unfortunate. I know who he is, and yet I have no way of telling anybody. Tsukiyomi is enveloped in total darkness, making it impossible for him to convey anything to the outer world. Yet had he only been able to speak its true name, the darkness would have lost all of its illusory power. As it is, though he can see the light of the outer world and uh, perceive the information around him, he is parallel to act. Was Tsukiyomi caught? What? I don't remember him being caught. They snuck in the... Well, I guess they snuck into the transient auction, and Tsukiyomi was kind of there, so... Maybe at one point he got caught. He is, like, uh, caught by Balor, which... Not Balor. Daikaku, which would make sense of... He, he was there as well during the, human, the transient auction. This place is like outer space. A place with no air where you, your screams go unheard. On another note, I do hope everyone left in Kabuki chose safe. Tsukiyomi thinks of his comrades, realizing that it is almost nightfall for the world outside of his dark prison. The outlaws have an advantage after dark that applies regardless of the situation. Namely, a queen who shines brightest under the moonlight. She is not only a queen, but also a nightwalker, the most revered and renowned in all of the worlds. Yes, Tokyo is saturated with fear and veneration towards her. Not even the world representatives can hold candle to her reputation. But what if night was no more? What would happen to Kabukicha then? Having figured this all out, Tsukumi is now convinced that the ultimate goal of those who are endeavoring to manifest Mahakala in this Tokyo is nothing less than the destruction of the sun and the moon, the eradication of Nairane, and the removal of all light from this world. Uh, 
Uh, where's everybody? The sun's going down soon and there's no one around. After running from Shiva, you and Kenko finally make it to Kabikicho. To your surprise, the streets are deserted. There's not a single person in sight, and Kengo, knowing how lively this place usually is, cannot help but feel distressed. That is different. I've never seen this place so quiet. Shh! Did you hear that, partner? I think it came from over there. Yeah, I heard it too. Let's check it out. Okay, I'll keep your guard up, partner. Hmm. I was sure that sound came from he around he here. Huh? What was that? That sounded pretty scary. Uh oh! Hmm? Ah, no way. Not those soldiers again. But wait. Something's up with them. G get a hold of yourselves! You know who we. Ugh! Don't let them bite you! If they suck your blood, you'll end up just like. Ugh! What the heck? They're turning on, on each other now? Uh, help! Somebody help us! Please! Hang back and watch. Laters. Uh, outsiders! Bl uh, blood! Give me your blood! So this is probably Ellie then, with her uh, possession ability. Or rather, vamp va vampirism. By the way, I, I really should just assume that there's only going to be one phase on these things. Uh, uh, it didn't work, oh well. <laughs> I just realized that one's possessed. Nice. And uh, stop his ass, but <sighs> the Ryota just get possessed. <laughs> he did. <laughs> oh well. Perhaps see they still haven't fixed the visual glitch. Go! Get out of here! I have no idea what's going on here, but you can't fight your own, can you? Come on, partner. We don't have time to wait on the slot. I'll get us out here. Giant Basher! And swathing himself in lightning, Kengo dashes through the enemy at breakneck speeds. We should be safe here. Anyway, what was that all about? Things were getting pretty wild back there. That was close. Thanks, Kengo. They seemed weird, like they're possessed. Can't think of it. They mentioned not getting bitten and uh, having their blood sucked off. <laughs> sort of reminds me of that trope. Know which one I mean? Here we just watched into a horror movie. Am I really gonna meet a... <laughs> Awaken. 
There's Ellie. Yes, my queen. You are to join the others in inviting in any and all outsiders present to Kapikicho. Understood? Yes, my queen. It shall be done. Ah, good. Off with you, then. Hmm. This is your last chance. Alpha party, drop your weapons and surrender. I rip uh. For the queen. For the queen. Vampires? That's what's disrupting your forces here? Tanatomo Keno Inusaka stands at the entrance of Kabukicho with a small unit of warmongers in tow. After listening to the scout's briefing, Tanatomo momentarily sinks into deep contemplation. Come to think of it, I have read that a vampire dwells within Kabukicho. A local was supposedly bitten by a transient of that sort back when the walls of around Tokyo was still new. News of this incident was widely reported by the media until all of Tokyo was aware that this local had become a vampire. If this is the card they are playing, I take it the people of Kapuki Show are planning on some nightmare guerrilla warfare. A vampire specialty, I'm sure. That Nightwalker is both feared and venerated in this Tokyo for a reason. Considering the fact that General Marduk is not particularly fond of fighting after dark. I will take the lead on this. The hero of the Land of Wash shall vanquish the monsters of the night. I may not be a vampire, but I am rather well versed in the ways of night raids and ambushes. Queen of the Night, part two, uh, battle in a wide map. One night, I got bitten by a vampire. To top it all off, the media broadcasted for the whole world to see. If you've seen one vampire movie, you've seen them all. Everyone th knows that you become a vampire if you get bitten by one. So that was that. I obtained both fame and supernatural powers overnight. Now, I'm the most well-known vampire in Tokyo. Sometimes, I see my life as a sort of twisted Cinderella story. I mean, isn't it? Hmm, huh. Sorry, I just woke up. This is where we were doing the interview, right? Yep, I'm Ellie. I take nighttime classes at Kabukicho Academy. I'm also working part-time at a little shop owned by a friend of my mom, and I also earn a pretty coin on the side as a model by doing interviews like this. Which sort of makes you journalists my prey, doesn't it? <laughs> bon appetit and all that. This is a bit weird. Huh? Am I really a vampire? Are you messing with me? You need to tote here or something. Oh, this is an article meant for those who don't know my story. Huh. I figured it was common knowledge by now. Sorry, I just haven't met anyone who doesn't already know I'm a vampire. Yeah, I drink blood. It tastes really good, and it keeps my skin smooth and hydrated. There isn't a single bad thing about it. Hmm. Why do I live here? Are you asking whether it has anything to do with my being a vampire? Well, kinda. This is where I want to be. It's where I'm meant to be. And it's one of those places, only places, and it's one of the only places in Tokyo that's awake when I am, all night long. As far as I'm concerned, there's nothing wrong with that. This place is so bright and glitzy. It's my scene. Don't get the wrong idea, okay? Like I said, I want to be here. I chose this time because I like it. Around here, they call me the Queen of Kabukicho. I don't ask them to, they just do. I'm young, beautiful, and everyone listens to me. I may not be royalty, 
But if that doesn't make me a queen, I don't know what would. So she got famous because she was turned into a vampire. <laughs> really? <laughs> okay. Oi, rise and shine, or whatever the, the vampire equivalent is. I hope you, you got enough for you to sleep, your majesty. Oh, there's no need to be so formal, Suzuka. We're friends. You really don't get sarcasm, do you? Anyway, since you actually showed up to a meeting for a change, I hope you're planning on doing something useful. Of course. You can't count on me, Suzuka. First things first. I'm going to need you to lot to clear out. It's too dangerous here. What? You're saying you want to do this alone, Ellie? Whoa, 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 whoa. Back up, look. Alone? That's crazy talk. Actually, it's not. Going by our Lady Queen's fighting cell. I'm pretty sure it would be easier for if we were out of the way. Exactly. Not to mention. Ellie's eyes dart uh, meaningfully towards the child in Marcosius' arm. Marchosius' arm. Hmm. <laughs> I've heard about this. My way of doing things definitely isn't suitable for children. Isn't there anything we can do to help at least? This is a study too, you know. You're with me, right, Tetsuya? Gyobu? Well, any objections? No. Then it's settled. We're leaving this to you, Ellie. There you are. My next meal. Target acquired. On my command. Fire! She's too fast. It's like we're shooting at fog. Mmm, delicious. <laughs> ah! mm, for now, just go wild. Drain the blood of everyone around you. Spread out and turn more and more of your comrades into my loyal subjects. The more blood I drink, the stronger and more beautiful I become, and the more minions I have to obey my commands. Those minions can, in turn, bring me more minions, and so the endless bu bloody cycle continues. No one is better at turning order into chaos than a vampire. them. They've all lost their minds. We're definitely watching a horror movie right now. <laughs> you see any sexy nonsense nearby? <laughs> partner! Hey! Partner! Where are you? <laughs> Where's King go? Crap, we got separated. There's no longer any way of telling friend from foe in this city. As trust within factions begins to break down, total chaos descends upon the streets. <sighs> oh, I think I'll be safe here. Oh shit. <laughs> no worries, I was prepared for this bitch. Hmm, another one. You're an outsider, aren't you? Oh, hello. You are. Hmm? You don't know who I am? Seriously? Have you been living under a rock? I'm Ellie, and there's a reason I can walk the streets of Kabiksha alone after dark without fear. Hmm? Where'd she go? Mm. Did she seriously fucking bite me? Something warm flows from your neck, trickling to the beat of your pulse. Next thing you know, you're lying face down on the ground, and your body's no longer under your control. Uh, what is this? I can't move a single muscle. Mmm, don't bother struggling. 
Don't you know it only takes one bite from a vampire to make you their slave? <laughs> if I can just reach my sword, I can rent her control from my body. Please, I just need... Oh! Dun -dun -dun! Huh? <sighs> that was close, my sword. Thanks, little Salmon. Hey, what gives? I drank your blood. How can you move w without my command? This time I'll be ready for her. You're not getting any more of my blood. Or do your sword face, Ellie? Are you kidding me? Oh my god, he failed his fucking vigor. Uh, uh, uh. Um. Oh no, they have guts. Shit. <laughs> They have got fuck. Oh good. <laughs> that was close. Greetings. I am Tanachamo Tano Inusaka. My father was slain in a cruel and despicable ploy, leaving my mother and me to wander the land without a place to call our own. Fortunately, I was blessed with a sharper mind than those around him. me. Which made avenging my father a rather simple task. You ask if I had to train very diligently? Oh no. I assure you, I am embarrassingly frail. Shall I tell you how I accomplished my revenge? Very well. Here is my tale. I disguised myself as a performer and flirted with my enemy until I had kindled their desire, gaining their trust. Oh, how easy it is to read the moves of those who believe they are superior to you. Ah, uh, but it's important not to resist their control over much. If you do, they might fret and end up killing you. They should instead whisper sweet nothings in their ears or feign weak attempts at escaping their clutches. You have to let them believe your efforts are in blame. This is key. This will allow you to subtly direct their actions in your favor, even as they believe they have you cornered. Then, in the end, you simply leave a blade pointed towards them in their path and wait for them to walk into it. And so your vengeance is complete. Satisfying, isn't it? It's a bit like a game of chess. Now, I've taken the liberty of reading through the dossier regarding Ellie, the Kubikicho Guildmaster. If nothing else, she is famous. Just look at all these interviews. The most famous vampire in Tokyo. Quite a title, isn't it? She's become more beautiful with every drop of blood she drinks, and is able to control the minds of her victims. 
It's evident that she's quite confident in herself, and for good reason, in addition to the gifts she was born with, she possesses the tremendous ability of a Nightwalker. She is alluring and powerful, so naturally, she has never had the need to exercise her mental faculties. <laughs> Times I've really just called her stupid. This will be like taking candy from a baby. <laughs> After all, it is important to remember the following. Since ancient times, wars have always been won by those who maintain their composure and use their wits. Two things that I very much doubt are vampires keep of. Yes, a dull mind like hers doesn't stand a chance against mine. You don't even know her, and you're already judging her for her, like, intelligence. Huh? <laughs> she's so powerful. It's like a world rep. Actually, I think she's even stronger. She's so determined to drink my blood. If that's what she wants, I'll make her work for it. Ugh. That's it. You've made me mad, and I'm done playing nice. All minions, to me. Hold on so I can drink my fill. <laughs> that was Tanatomo. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> if you can go, help. About time. I hope you're worth all this trouble. Now. Mm, thank you for finally bringing your minions to a stop, Ellie. I've been quite a nuisance. <laughs> Holy shit. Fuck. <clears throat> what is this? Uh oh, what's happening now? Oh, this. This is the blade of a hero, forged for the sole purpose of slaying demons, and trusted to me by the noble source of the land of Wa. I must admit, I'm surprised you're still alive that with this through your chest, but at least you're mobilized. This'll do. Ellie's minions remain frozen in place, keeping you surrounded. They are watching the scene unfold without the slightest change of expression. <coughs> what are you trying to do? What are you... <coughs> Tanatoma drives the sword in deeper, swiftly silencing Ellie's words. Now, oh, allow me to answer that for you. I am counselor to the warmongers and one of the Key Nine Eight. My name is Tanatomo Keno Inusaka, bearer of the Orb of Wisdom. Tanatoma. That's so why I'm here. Well, first I ask myself this. Why do your minions attack those around them? Of course, it must be because you commanded them to do so. I inferred you must have ordered them to attack indiscriminately. That made my strategy a simple one. I only needed to wait until this command was over. Mm. Are you following me, or shall I slow down? I hope this is not too difficult for your feeble brain to comprehend. <laughs> <sighs> there is only... She's like... Tanatoma is continuously stabbing Ellie, Jesus Christ. There is a lesson in all this. Perhaps next time you should remember that the weakness of a commander whose troops have no mind of their own is that those troops will only do as they are commanded. That leaves an awful lot of openings for enemies to exploit. Hmm. Uh, but you're not hearing me now, are you? Tanatomo smiles serenely and twists the blade still submerged in Ellie's flesh, preventing the latter from speaking or even talking coherently. You're going too far. Hmm. All traces of motion vanish from Tenetum's face upon hearing your plea. So you're one of the eight dog warriors. Do you know Tenetum and Moritaka? How about Yasuori? Yasuori. Tenetum mumbles the name as though it was a word foreign and unknown. Then the council turns and stares at you in silence. Queen of the Night 3. Uh, large map. Probably facing Tanatomo next. Probably only one face. Maybe. The moon does not glow with its own light, and it can only do so at night. 
where the moon is fated to ever reflect another shine. Let me return to the tale of when I, Tanatomo Keno Inusaka, was pursuing one of my adversaries in the land of Oa. I speak of the one, the miscreants who built their wealth off my father's ruin. I had disguised myself as a performer and infiltrated their estate. It was during this time that Yasuyori Kobungu Inuta was invited to the estate as an honored guest for his renown as a warrior of great skill. Yet it wasn't long before Yasuyori was on the verge of being eliminated for adamantly refusing to swear fealty to the estate owner despite the rewards on offer. <sighs> I could not understand why Yasuyori did not simply feign loyalty. All it would have taken was a single easy lie. Flabbergasted as I was, I could not take my eyes off his noble countenance. That night, I snuck into Yasuyori's room. My intention was to see if I couldn't use him as a pawn in my plans of vengeance. I found him surrounded by assassins, moments away from being overwhelmed. The plot I had suspected from the moment of his arrival was already in motion. There was no good reason for me to assist him. We had only just met, and working to make him my ally would only jeopardize my revenge scheme. Yet I didn't hesitate. I felled the assassins with my own razor-sharp hairpins and spoke directly to the surprised warrior. I love you. I fell for you at first sight, and I cannot live my life without you. Now I have dirtied my hands for you. Take me with you, or kill me now. Feigning vulnerability was my specialty. However, these lies were crude and sloppily delivered. Still, Yasuyori stared straight back at me and responded to his dignity. I live with no promise of tomorrow. I'm afraid I cannot reciprocate your love. I am truly sorry. I thought him so pitiful. How could he not see such pathetic lies? And yet even more astonishing was the fact that he actually felt bad for me. I remember how his face was twisted up in anguish at the thought that his rejection had hurt me. Must I tell you that it was all a lie, Yasuyori? That night, I merely returned his words with a shy smile. A performance I looked back on was pride even now. <laughs> Holy fucking <flesh. laughs> <laughs> Tenotomo continues to twist the sword around in Ellie's wound to keep her from issuing any commands to the soldier. Holy fucking shit. There's no need to be so cruel. That's enough. Hmm? <laughs> Since when do I take orders from you, Arthur? Oh yes, I know who you are. You are the prize of every last world representative Kovets. As for the so-called vampire, unless I'm very much mistaken, she's no friend of yours. In other words, you have no reason to care for her. Hmm. Your penchant for needless sympathy reminds me of... Someone. Oh my god. Is, she, is he blocking out the memory of Yasuri? Come to think of it, he seemed awfully cozy with the eight dog warriors. Did he play on Yasuri's sympathies as well? Not that I have the right to condemn such things. After all, I myself have done something very similar. <laughs> Oh, what's that look for? Ah, perhaps Yasuyori has mentioned me to you before. Immediately after the downfall of Penitentia Academy, when Yasuyori had returned to Yoyogi Academy, he approached you for a quick word. I just wanted to tell you that I've decided to leave Penitentia and return to Yoyogi Academy. I'm sure we will be both facing hardships in the battles to come, but... Please, take care of yourself, Arathon. And do not hesitate to call me for aid. I would also like to make a request of you, if I may. If you ever encounter one by the name of Tanatomo Kano Inusaka, 
Please relay the fact that Yasuyori Kabuka Inuta is a raid and hopes to hear from his old friend directly. Yasuyori went on to recount some fond memories he shared with Tanatama, the warmonger's counselor. Now, a word of warning. Tanatama can be a bit of a trickster. Hmm, speaking of which, he should have seen the look on my face when I was told the marriage proposal had been a joke. I, uh... <clears throat> anyway, just know that the Tanatama is not a bad person. The council carries many a comrade's burden, and is always willing to be the one to play the role of the villain, if it means sparing someone else's conscience. I've never known someone so resilient. Tanatama possesses the strength to smile while quashing the pain of self-denial. Yet I fear I forced Tanatama to shoulder something else by leaving the guild. But in doing so, I've settled Tanatama with my own incompetence. I just want you to pass on the message that I'm doing all right. He said that. Oh, yes, Yori. I'm afraid I simply haven't the time of day to worry about someone who was just my pawn. I'm far too busy to think about people I cut out of my life. Could you tell him that next time you see him? Oh boy, <laughs> he's really upset. <laughs> Still following Ali's previous command, the soldiers suddenly rush forward and capture you again, pinning your arms behind your back. Ugh, let me go. Oh, have no fear. I have no intention of harming you at present, Tarathan. After all, if something were to happen to you, who knows what the East and South would do. Not to mention that I'd earn the displeasure of the world representatives. As one who represents wisdom, Tanatoma is fully aware that anything and anyone can be replaced. That is simply the way of the world. Things that are unnecessary and irrelevant tend to be removed for convenience's sake. Being possessed of a strong self of self-preservation, Tanatoma knows how easy it would be for them to find a new counselor. There is only one to whom uh, Tanatoma is wholeheartedly devoted, unquestionably loyal. No one who once cut ties with their own brother. Tanatoma has never feared their wisdom, yet longs to be recognized by them as a useful tool. Tanatoma wishes to be so irreplaceable to this individual that they will not even think of replacing Yasuyori with another. Yasuyori? Hmm. I thought he was worried about his own replacement. Even as he struggles against your captors, Tanatoma continues to exacerbate Ellie's pain with vindictive precision. <laughs> Show your sword. Tanatoma Kenon Inusaka thinks of how unsightly this is. You let your own weapon leave your hands for the sake of someone you've only just met? That is an insensible and foolish act. What could possibly come of doing so much for someone who should be irrelevant to you? And so, for a brief moment, Tanatoma's focus narrows in on your blade as it hurls closer. The counselor whips out a folding fan and strikes it down. <clears throat> My sword! Damn it! Actually, it is quite the opposite. You stole Tanatoma's attention for a moment. Giving me the moment I need to get up close. <laughs> what? Oh shit. <laughs> they came back, the homies. <laughs> Can you stand, Ellie? I'm sorry. I know I, you, I said I'd let you take care of things, but I had you followed. Mm, Suzuka. So everyone thought that I'd end up getting myself in trouble again, huh? Yep. I mean, are you really surprised? You should be used to that by now. <laughs> You're right. I should have expected this. Just like you shouldn't need to ask me if I can stand up or not. You know I can. Your time can have been better. What's, what's with the eep? Eep! Now that Ellie's minions are no longer spreading the chaos, the warmongers have managed to rally together and surround you in the blink of an eye. Crap, where's my sword? I'm done for. On my command. Cha. Oh no you don't! Zelot Basher! Catch, partner! Maybe you should keep better hold of your weapon next time, eh? Kango teases as he flings your sword towards you. <sighs> You're a lifesaver. <laughs> My bad, my bad. 
couldn't help myself. I just had to wait for the most dramatic moment. But hey, I was watching over you with that wise to make sure things can get too. Whoa. Looks like we got more of them coming for us. We can talk to the leader, partner. Can go. <laughs> Don't look so worried. Like I said, I brought backup. Oh wow, it's the others. This won't do. Look at this chaos you've wrought upon our beloved Kabucho. I, Marchosius, will not allow these transgressions to go unpunished. Emerge from the Seventh Thrones, steadfast devotion. Uh, I get to fight now, right? Right? Awesome! I'm going all out. Whirlwind snare! <laughs> Don't mind me. I'm just a lady passing by, but I've got a sack to kick the loving sh I mean, not the end to my crew. Hey, you there. After the blade is removed from her chest, Ellie strides over to you and looks you dead in the face. You tried to tell me earlier. What's her name? Huh? How's your wound already gone? Oh yeah, vampire. I can hardly believe it. Not only is she standing, but her wound healed up in the moment the blade was removed. The healing powers of a vampire are certainly impressive. The damage inflicted should have been extensive. The pain alone would have been enough to shatter the mind of any ordinary high schooler. Okay, this makes sense. If she's a vampire, then... <laughs> yes, no wonder she survived then. It was, like, it wasn't that bad. Hmm, surprised, huh? Guess you never met a queen before. This is nothing. The name's Ellie. You'll want to remember that. I'm a woman who can walk the streets of Kabukicho alone at night. Hmm. You're all bluster, no substance. This is why I cannot stand small minds. Why do you keep on failing, bigger? It's fine. Maybe. Nice. I walk alone through Capicho under the light of the full moon, fluttering down through the haze of the neon signs, filtering down. But it isn't always a pleasant stroll through the moonlight. There are plenty of people who despise me for standing out. I don't know how many times I've been ambushed and dragged into the back alley. But I never feel, uh, feel hurt by it. Any of it. There's always the other end of the spectrum, those who pity me for being turned into a vampire in the first place. But I've never felt that way. Actually, I've had a bunch of people tell me that vampirism can be cured. They're nice about it, but they don't understand that I wanted this. No matter how many times I tell them that I chose to be a vampire, the message doesn't seem to sink in. So, night after night, I walk the streets alone. Never the sidewalks, always the middle of the road. I enjoy the moonlight. I think the moon is a beautiful thing. Fun fact, sunlight isn't actually deadly to me. I could go out at midday, but I just don't wanna. I don't care if everybody believes otherwise. It walks for my thing, and that's that. Maybe that's why I like the moon so much. It shines up there in a leak of its own, doing its own thing among the stars. Why can't I do the same? Huh? The moon is just reflecting light. It doesn't actually shine. So what? I don't care. That's just not how I see it. Listen, I haven't lost my way. 
I've chosen my own path. That's what's made me so famous. That's even helped me find some people I don't mind hanging out with. But friends are no friends. I will walk alone. That's just who I am. I love walking the streets while gazing up at the moon. This is my city. The street, right here, is the path I decided to take. I chose the life I love, and I love the life I chose. When was it they first called me their queen? I don't remember, but I know I made sure they meant it as a compliment. Hold up a second. How's about we end this little skirmish, eh? I'm sure your side would prefer to retreat as well. A uh, little birdie told me that something's going on in your territory. Might want to deal with that first. After all, we're just small fries, aren't we? Pretty sure the forces from the south are the real ones you're fighting here. And I don't think we have forces to waste on dealing with a few miscreants of lice. What do you say? Hmm. Tanatom is the vice peeps, indicating it has received the message. With a brief glance, the canine warrior of wisdom confirms its contents. Hmm, you may be right. It seems I have been too hasty in my pursuit of glory. I shall take my leave. Wait. Yasuyori is right about you. Can you at least contact him and did I not make myself clear? There is absolutely no need for him to concern himself with me. We shall continue our little dance at a later date. For now, farewell, Lady Elia Kabukicho. Until we meet again, Arthen. Well, now that's taken care of. Stand back, partner! Kango quickly steps in front of you as Ellie turns to face you, shielding you behind his broad back. Oh, please. I'm not even hungry. Can you tell me what you're doing here, Arthen? Uh, your majesty, he... Ah, oh, shut it, Tetsuya. I want to hear from him. But... Tetsuya. Yeah, yeah, I know. Oh, he's our queen for a reason. The ultimate weapon. Yeah, there should be one in both uh, wars. So. Don't admit any details. What do you mean the city's in danger? Meanwhile, at the Warmonger's Fortress... Ooh. Pretty. Even though Bertrand's annoying. Hello, hello. What a surprise. What are you doing here, duo? Hmm. Hello, Plan B. Bring your... <laughs> duo Lisa. <laughs> hello, Plan B. Bring your battles. Or should I address you as Bertrand, as you requested of Curran? To answer your question... I'm here because Kern asked me to come. <laughs> well, isn't that interesting? My genius spare is paying me a visit. It's almost like someone thinks I'm broken and needs to be replaced. Bertro, I saw you gazing at the moon. Is something on your mind? I was just calculating. I'm trying to figure out a way to accelerate the progress of this war. War has always moved the hands of time forward for humanity. The demolition of the establishment leads to the creation of possibilities. Therefore, our goal should always be ultimate destruction. I've been working simulations in my genius mind to see where that would lead us. After going over the figures, I have come to a conclusion. Bertrand, the warmonger's skilled master, points upward. I must drop the moon on this Tokyo. Okay, Majora's mask. Ultimate weapon activated when? 